Hi, I'm Mark Weibrow and this is the Electronic Cafe, the channel for the lovers of electronic music. And I'm Andy McNabb, so let's get started. So welcome to another special interview edition of the Electronic Cafe. I'm delighted to say we finally got to meet Phono Head. He's an artist that I kind of found last year and Mark and I just thought he was fantastic. So good that we put his album A Broken Shape of Time in our top uh, 30 of 2020. His new album's just come out, which I thoroughly recommend and you'll get to see and hear more about that in the interview. But yeah. Check him out. We're delighted to say I've got him finally on the show. Great guy, amazing music. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. We're really keen to grow our audience. We know there's thousands and thousands of like-minded people who just love music and just don't know where to find it. This is the place to find it, on the Electronic Cafe. You know, We started a hot stuff section in our very first episode because we're really keen to promote artists that deserve to get you know, more recognition for some of the amazing work they do. And we've been doing that ever since and we'll continue to do so. So if you have friends that love music that haven't found our show yet, please ask them to, or tell them about us and get them to subscribe and we'll welcome them warmly. Right, enough of the pitch. Um, sit back and enjoy this fantastic interview with the incredible Fano Head. So Ed, what, what happened in your life to make you go, right, I want to do, this is what I want to do for my career. What, what was the spark? Was it a band you saw or was it just you? I think it was a mid-age crisis. <laughs> <laughs> there is no meaning in this deal. Your mind is full of complications. It's hard to see. everyone welcome to another fantastic interview edition of the electronic cafe today we are joined by someone i discovered last year really loved his music so much that i put uh, included his album uh, in our top 30 of 2020 ladies and gentlemen we'd like to introduce you to the fabulous phono heads the electronic cafe phono head welcome to the show my friend oh thank you andy hi mark hi welcome hi, thanks andy. for joining us thanks for sharing your sunday afternoon uh, anything for you, anything. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, congratulations on your new album, you know, uh, Act of Your Theatre. Uh, great piece of work. You must be really pleased with it. I am. Yeah, I can say so. Um, you should. It's great. Just, um... <laughs> <laughs> it's a slightly harder sound than your um, your previous one, I think. It's. I didn't want it to sound the same. Mm. I didn't want it to sound the same. I actually don't want any album to sound the same to, mm. you know, to the previous stuff. Yeah, yeah. I really want to do something different every time. I've always wanted to use a guitar in my music. So in this, you know, second album. You can hear it. That's probably, you can hear it a little bit. Mm. So I started with a little bit. I didn't do it, you know, big time straight away. <laughs> uh, That's for your heavy metal album. And I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> do it. This, you know, the, 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 this kind of, you know, Kind of very very guitar music. I don't want to make a purely electronic music and a purely guitar music. So I want, mm. I want to mix those both yeah, sure, sure. substances, you know, and create something interesting. And so I started to try it with a, with the second album. So I started to put a guitar a little bit in every song. Yeah, there's a definitely oh. different texture on this album to the first one, which is great. And uh, make just so our viewers, like I'm, I'm guessing buying it direct from your website is the best way to buy it right um on cd or download is that right phonohead.com um, very easy very perfect forward. and um, for those who haven't heard Phonohead's music check it out it's amazing 
Yeah, and also uh, just recently I started, um, I put uh, the form on the website for my uh, mailing list if you want to join. Yeah. Um, I'll send I'll send some news monthly. I will not send any spam. Don't worry about that. It will be just something you know very central, <laughs> something about new release is coming out and or maybe a new video, but it won't be any like you know use, useless blah blah blah. It will be it will be something just just yeah. only useful information. So when you're when you're writing, for, do you write continuously? And when you've got a number of songs, put them on an album, or do you tend to write for a project? And keep them like you know separate entities. Oh, I say that I've never really thought about it. I'm just writing stuff, and that's it. And uh, well, the thing is now, I've got loads of stuff in my archive. You know, nice. I used to write a lot of instrumental stuff, so I've got tons of music basically. Not not maybe tons, you know, less and less <laughs> by by the time by the time <laughs> working on them, I've, I produce stuff. So. Basically, every song from the previous album and uh, I mean, uh, Broken Shape of Time and uh, you now the current album, album uh, Actor of Your Theatre, mainly all the melodies and all the music is just for, taken from, from the archive, from the previous works. And, uh, but I also do, I do create something new as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, because sometimes it happens like, you know, you take that old stuff, you take that old melody, you start working on it, and it comes out totally different, you know, some, yeah, something sure. very, very absolutely different. And it's just yeah. amazing how it works. I think, I think <laughs> me, and Andy have, me and Andy have got some stuff in the archive from about 25 years ago, which is, <laughs> we really need to go and visit it. <laughs> well, well, why don't you use it? folded in your bag. Decisions covering your back Your undeniable solutions Based on immaculate conclusions Green-eyed monsters are scared to fight Let them die out of their own spite Let them die out If I could say so, I've, I'm very thankful to myself that I didn't bin all that stuff. Yeah, and I've been collecting everything throughout the years. Uh, just uh, because uh, some people they just do, they just don't worry about it. Yeah. Like, that doesn't sound well. I mean, I just just been it. Even if you don't like it, if you don't if you think that you will never use that part of melody or something like that, save it for later. Yeah. Then maybe in a couple of years' time, you come you come back to that and you love it, and you'll decide to use it. Yeah, and, uh, or as you say, it will spark and, uh, something else, right? Or as you say, it will spark something else to come out and yeah, beat. Or they will spark you up and just maybe just give you some some ideas and yeah, just, yeah. Just lead you, just direct you, you know, to so, something new. So, Ed, what, what happened in your life to make you go, right, I want to do, this is what I want to do for my career? What, what, what was the spark? Was it a band you saw or was it just you? I think it was a mid-age crisis. <laughs> 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 That's why. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> yes, yes. I am just. I'm, I, I understand you hundred percent. And uh, well, but to be a bit more serious, uh, I, I don't know. It just just came to me since I was a kid. You know. Yeah. It was just running under the table since I since those times. I think it was uh, about. I think it was nineteen ninety eight. When I first started thinking about you know, music production, and I was I was introduced by my friend. I was introduced to to a computer program you know, for for music production, and I gra just gradually started you know playing with it and doing this this and that. Because those days we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have internet, we sure. couldn't get any information on how to use the stuff. So it was just you know trials and doing this this and that try this try that and making thousands of mistakes and just all through that just self-learning yeah and uh so yeah unfortunately because of that it took a long time for me to become what i am now the, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm still learning i'm still developing as a product as a producer as a musician i mean i'm a very bad musician to be honest 
I can't play with it. So yeah, but <laughs> I can only play what I need. I can only play what I need. Uh, what I need for, to play for myself. Uh, I yeah, can show sure. that. Yeah, on a guitar and uh, on keyboards. But if you ask me to play, oh, uh, can you, you play us some, you know, Mozart or something? I don't know, Beethoven or something like that. I would just run away, you know, hide and cry. You, know, just, you wouldn't find me anymore. Yeah, but I think most musicians, you would think most musicians can't read music. It's what comes from here, isn't it? I mean, music's such an emotive I thing. Can it's, read music. I can read music. I can. Oh, right, okay. I can. Yeah, I taught myself. Uh, I understand notes and all that stuff. You know what is what, of how to write this, and you know what me, what that key means, what that, what that chord means, and the. All that I know that a little bit. I can't read it wow. straight, you know, straight from the paper and play it straight away. That is just. Yeah. But you understand it. I can't understand how people do it. You know. <laughs> I think if you if you've got a musical mind, um, and it was the same when we was we was gigging. If if it sounds good, invariably it is good. Do you know what I mean? We yeah. we played or or supported or had bands supported us that were technically brilliant, really good yeah. musicians, and it was a little bit dull. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we play stuff and we wasn't the best musicians in the world, but we was pretty successful and it sounded good and people loved it. So I think if you've got a musical yeah. ear and you can hear melodies and you can hear songs, it sounds better than these technical bands that are very, very proficient, I think. No, I totally, totally agree with, with you. Uh, because, I mean, being a professional musician doesn't mean you're a professional, you are, you're going to be a good composer. Exactly. You know, you're a musician, you're not a composer. Everything I do is just the way it has to be, it has to sound, the way it has to sound. So that music sounds the way I want it to sound, and the singing sounds the way I want it to be sung. So <laughs> you've got a very unique, you've got a very unique voice, but you're right. I mean, you look at most of the bands we love, so New Order, the greatest respect to Bernie Sumner, I love it to pieces. He hasn't got the best voice, nor is Neil Tarrant from the Pet Shop Boys. They haven't got very strong voices, but they make I it. I love his voice. I love it. But it works. You know what I mean? Most people say it's yeah. not It's not a very powerful voice, but it works. Same it doesn't with, matter. Exactly. Bernie's voice works. When you listen in your order, you know it's them because of his voice. But you know, and, and but you've got a very distinct voice, and you've been bringing out quite. I mean, your material, your work with work rate is pretty strong. I mean, two albums in a year, what three three singles with it's gonna be three different albums. Things. Sorry, we'll, yeah. We'll, so we'll talk about it a bit later. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, but but you know, it's 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 a it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous amount of output. Who's 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 in, who inspired you? I mean, you must have some inspirations or bands that you've listened to and gone. Wow, love them. Anyone in particular, you know, really made you sit up and sort of inspire you to, in writing? There's, I think that these days, there's nothing really needs to inspire me. I don't, I don't need anything to inspire me. It's all here. Yeah. It's, I just need to sit down and start working. That's it. That's all I need. Nice. I don't need anything. I don't need to listen to any music. And uh, in fact, music just distracts me from from my work. I mean, I work with yeah. music. Uh, I mean, any spare time I'm with music, and if I start listening to another music on top of my music, I'll just be totally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you record your music on? Do you is it Logic or just uh, Pro Tools? Pro Tools. Tools. Yeah. Okay. I just uh, started working on Pro Tools. I used to work on Cakewalk. My oh yeah. First, my first program was Cakewalk. And then they uh, just seized their existence, and they said they they them they're not on anymore. And I switched to Pro Tools. Yeah. Do you use um, all software simps, or do you have a go-to hardware mm -hmm. simps? Mainly software, all software, mm -hmm. all software. So it's all in the box. I've got a synth synthesizer, and uh, <laughs> I mainly use it as a MIDI keyboard. 
is yeah, sure. connected to your computer because there's so much stuff. There's so many different, you know, synths and, and, and samples. So all in the box. And uh, it's all in the box. Yeah, it's all. Of it. well, it's, it's so much easier, easier, isn't it? It's so much easier. But then again, you, easier. You, easier, you do get into a little bit of a trap where you're continually scrolling down sounds, like trying to find a sound. Well, I do anyway. I mean, if you're trying to find a sound, you're scrolling through, you'll find it, and then trying to find another sound, but then end up going back to that sound. It's like it's a bit, yeah, it's easier, but it's e also harder than with the old days in Simps. You found the sound and then you went with it. The way I work, is just I sit down with a bit with a pencil and a paper and just write down the sounds that I like. Mm. So it's all it's all about writing. It's all about writing down. You know, so the base for I don't know for the song Metropolitan Child and yep. you just write down this, this and that so the sub bass and then, then the top bass and this, this and that so different versions and then you just play with it and then you just choose the best and um, I mean it is a bit it is a bit sometimes you maybe can miss a good sound because when you've got too many you're going to have to make a choice ah oh, that one sounds nice <laughs> and that one is uh, that one is a bit better, but mm. that one is brilliant. I mean, no, that one is not. And you just you just get yourself confused, and uh, <laughs> so you're gonna have to make a choice. So, do you yeah, um, tough 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 life of a musician? <laughs> hey, you is not a Do you ever play live or do you ever think about playing live or? Uh, I've never played live. I used to perform live as, a, as an actor, a little bit. Let's not talk about it. Let's not go there. <laughs> That's a whole other interview. <laughs> maybe sometime later, maybe. maybe, maybe later. But uh, I would love to. I would love to you know, do live performance, but I want to do it in a proper way. Yeah. So if you see what I mean, I want to do it, you know, with a good lighting, with a good music, with a good quality music. And therefore, I need to build a fan base first. <laughs> Got you. The main target for me is now to create as many songs as possible, just to create, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the foundation for my music career, to be honest, if I could say so, yeah. And... Uh, and then, yes, we can start thinking about the live performances because I need to have people who perform to. Yeah. Who perform for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, other than that, you know, there's no point, you know, going anywhere to some club and, uh, you know, perform for 20 people. I mean, they, they would probably enjoy it. And, uh, <laughs> and I would be thankful, thankful to them for, you know, for coming up. But uh, it's not enough. Mm. Uh, no, making, making good cover. live performances is an expensive thing. I um, say it doesn't cover the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're a very sort of what's the word? You're very focused on what you do. Is there, is there any time you've written something actually I'd like to collaborate with someone else, or is it just something that doesn't come into your mind? Or do you ever play a song and go, do you know what? I'd love so and so to sing this? Has that ever happened? Uh, it happened uh, a couple of times or once, I don't remember. Yeah. We sound pretty much a known artist. You know, I've made a, I've made a remix, for one of the bands from Russia. Okay. And uh, so they like my stuff. They like my uh, melodic, uh, like uh, instrumental stuff. And they asked me if you want to, you know, we can put you on a, on a CD, just to make a remix for this song. So I, I made it, and they liked it. But unfortunately, they put my name right uh, wrong on on the sleeve, on the album sleeve, and uh, so I just went. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, and then, uh, with, with with a singer from from the band, uh, we decided to make a, a cover version for 
uh, one of the Depeche Mode songs. It, it was But Not Tonight, But Not Tonight, the song But Not Tonight, yeah. so we made it. Sounded, sounded all right. It was kind of, you know, we could have used it for, I don't know, from for Eurovision, maybe something like that. It was that kind of style. And just yeah. Yeah. Very, very poppy. Yeah. You know, you know extremely poppy. Well, even, even Depeche Mode's version, the original version, is very poppy, isn't it? But then they but did but a, Our version was better. But, <laughs> but they, did a, they, did a later, they did a later live version on their live in Berlin um, thing, which is a much, much better version of it. But it was, I think it was, wasn't it instrumental or was it just a piano version? It was, yeah, it was, I think it's pretty much piano and uh, Martin Gore singing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which it, it wasn't so poppy as it as it was on their yeah, yeah, it was, uh, original I release. Be, but, um, um, that's, I like that song. No, no, that's cool. that's yeah. a good song. It's cool. mm. that's a good song. Mate, that, I mean, are you quite an avid music collector? Have you, I mean, I know you're obviously very focused on your career and music. Did you buy a lot of music as well? Used to. I used to buy a lot of CDs. Uh, yeah, but then, uh, I mean, these days, you know, they're not very useful, the CDs. And, uh, nah. I had, to, uh, I had a know, collection. <laughs> it's vinyl, mate. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I need a vinyl collection, a vinyl collection. So uh, when I got myself a decent house, not this, I got myself a decent room for for the mu- musical enjoyment, for enjoying the music yeah. properly. Sure. Uh, this is where I'm going to have a you know proper tune table and nice. uh, start building my vinyl collection. Mm. But at the moment now, I'm just. Uh, it's Spotify, all Spotify. Yeah. So, so I was going to ask you what your desert. If you could take one album to a desert island, what would it be? <laughs> What's your desert island disc? Uh, and I normally try and guess. I'm, I bet I'm that, wet, completely wrong. <laughs> that is definitely David Bowie. Uh, that probably is going to be my favorite David Bowie's album, Outside. Ah, okay. I love it. Yeah, that's a good album. It's not. It's not. I mean, I've got. I love uh, not only that album, but I think that one would be my best album. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. So mine's Scary Monsters. All right. Bowie album. Love that album. But I'm a massive Bowie fan. Massive. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm getting more in David Bowie these days. Mm. I only. I always used to listen to David Bowie, but wasn't very deep. Yeah. Bowie. But I mean, I just. Uh, I can't, you know, I mean, I can't find anything better than David Bowie, to be honest. No, uh, mate, I've looked yeah. at everything. What's can't happening. argue that. Maybe. Can't and argue. All these later albums, I really like the Heathen one as well. I think that's a good album. Mm. Which one? Heathen. 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 All right, yeah. yeah. But I, I still struggle with Black Star just because I guess I know the, you know, everyone thinks about sad. the story. The story it's around sad. it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, uh, yeah. I can't really listen to it and not be associated with, you know, his death. His it's death. hard, very hard, hard to listen. Yeah, it so, is, yeah. I, yeah, I had a funny story. So I was, I, 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 I think that album came out on the Friday, and he died that weekend, and I totally missed it somehow. And I was on a plane to Belgium. I sat on the plane. I could hear Bowie songs. I thought, oh god, you know, guys are playing Bowie. Then I went to this interview for this particular company that I was looking at potentially joining, and um, they're playing Bowie and Reception. I'm like, wow, it's really weird. Everywhere I'm going, they're playing Bowie. And this woman said, well, yes, because he's died. And I went, pardon? And she told me. And I literally had to go into the toilet for about 10 minutes and be late for the interview because I, I couldn't honestly just burst into tears. I was just gone, completely gone, because he meant so much to me. Um, yeah, um, you know, and I, that's why I, I don't feel comfortable with that album. I know it's a... And, it, and actually, musically, it's good, but I just don't think it's as good as some of the others we mentioned, like Outside or... I actually like... Um, oh, God, what's the one Little Wonder on? Um, There's one, uh, Earthling. 
Yes, I love Earthly. Love Earthly. Great like, album. Black tie, white noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, absolutely brilliant. So I'm guessing, you know, I was going to ask you, table for four for Fono Head, who joins you? I'm guessing you've already oh named God, what, what did you say? A table for four for Fono Head. Who would, who would you have as your three guests? To your, sit with you, your dinner, your dinner, you, Mark, and who else? <laughs> <laughs> who else are we taking? I don't know. <laughs> I guess Bowie's probably. Let's take Rusty. Right? Let's take Rusty with us. Yeah, yeah. God, yeah. <laughs> that man's unbelievable. He's a t- pure tour de force. That man. Um, <laughs> amazing stories. Amazing stories. Mm-hmm. But yeah, well, and he's, a, he's a massive fan well. of yours as well, right? He's been yeah, very- yeah, and um, yeah, yeah, he was. I remember when my album came out, the first, first album, and uh, I don't remember, was it the first day or a second day? I think it was just the first day I just, I just released it. I don't, I don't know where he found out, where from he found out about the album. I, don't, I only had an advert on, on Facebook with, with my video from the Chipotle chart. Mm. Yeah, it was the only advert. And uh, how he found out, I don't know. And I'm looking at a message of oh, Rusty Egan. Blah, blah, blah. I said, what? <laughs> Rusty Egan? Some, some kind of, I don't know, joke or something like that. And I opened that messenger and I said, you know, it's Rusty Egan. And, I said, oh, I, and he, was, he was very, I don't know, he didn't say a lot. He just said, oh, mate, I like your album. Is there any chance I can use it for my... Uh, Broadcast uh, on yeah, my, Twitch, uh, TV, Twitch TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought, God, of course, yes, you can. Mm. And, uh, and he wanted, I don't remember, did he want one track or two tracks or something like that? And I just sent him an entire album. He was like, you could just use whatever you want to, you just use any, any song you want, just use it. And, uh, and I think this is where I, uh, Met you, if, you have, if I can say so, on, on that uh, yeah, sure, on, sure. On, one of his broadcasts. Yeah. Where we started to chat, and uh, yeah, so well, I think I'm going to tell you now. I think it was me that told Rusty to check you out because <laughs> <laughs> I heard the album straight away and said you should check. We we do send stuff to each other quite a bit, trying oh. to out geek each other and find new bands. But I said you should check this guy; he's really awesome. Um, oh, Rusty, but Rusty is different. phenomenal though because oh, he's so he, nice. Oh. He just yeah. like knows. Every new release, every new band, he somehow he's got this radar that picks yes. up new material. I don't know how, how he, how he um, does it? He just yeah, we we collect a lot of music. You listen to a lot of music, you know. Um, but Rusty's on a just different level. It's I just... mean, he's everywhere. He's a, he's all over the place. He's all yeah. over the internet. He's on Twitter. He's on Instagram. He's on Facebook. He's there. Mm. He's there. And he's doing a gig at the same time. And I don't know. <laughs> he's an octopus. I, 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 I said to him once, I said, I love your show and I hate your show. And he went, well, I know why you love it. I said, yeah, because of the music. He said, well, why do you hate it? I said, because when you play a track that I don't know, I go and buy it because I hear it. And I like that. And I, by those Twitch TV shows he did, I'd probably end up buying 10 albums by the end of it going, oh, my oh. God. Because that's what I hated. But I also loved it because it's such good music. I reckon a third of my albums is probably through recommendations from Rusty. Mm. You know, oh. so he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's an incredible, he's a pioneer in the 80s and he's still doing it now. And um, as Mark says, he's just, you know, He's got his ear on the ground in terms of everything that's going around and new stuff. Um, mate, I guess there's a, I guess you got to build your fan base up. But your music for me, it's got. To, oh, is it going to come out on vinyl ever? Because um, I would love to be holding. I'd love to be sitting here with you now, holding a copy of your, or two, both your, all your albums like like these. Well, I normally have them at the back here because you know I just think they 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 are such a big sounding songs and they sound great uh, as they are. But I, I guess I'm just because I'm a vinyl junkie. Uh, as Mark is, you know, is there any any plans for that to happen? It will happen. Yes. I don't know. I don't know how soon it's going to happen, but it will. 
Brilliant. As I mentioned before, I need a fan base first. Mm. I understand. I understand you want it. And uh, but I, unfortunately, I can't produce only two, <laughs> two discs. Yeah. I need to produce a thousand at least, or yeah. you know, five, 500 is, is I think it's a minimum issue, 500 thing. Yeah. 500 units. So, yeah. All the all that stuff, you know, vinyl, CDs. I'm gonna do it. Just gonna. I'm, I just need to develop a little yeah, bit. Sure. More. Now you get there, mate. Your, your music's too good not to. So it'll so, definitely definitely happen. I mean, we are everyone we ask about vinyl, and everyone would like to put their stuff out on vinyl because it's a it's a it's a really nice tangible form. I mean, your out al- your albums would sound great on vinyl, but obviously everyone's having a real issue with vinyl at the moment, as in the delays in getting it back from the plants and the test pressings. There's just such a, yeah. there's a vinyl shortage in the world at the moment and everyone, everyone's releases are getting knocked back. I think it's up to about, I don't know, nine, monthly, months. nine months a year now that mm-hmm. before you get your test pressings back and get actually on vinyl. So, But I think the first thing that I'll, re- I'll release is going to be CDs, maybe. I'll try, yeah. I'll try with the CDs first. And uh, and the vinyl, yeah, it's a bit of a bigger, bigger, bigger thing. As as uh, I have a bad experience with producing CDs. Well, really bad, bad from one side and the good from the other side. So I got I, I know how to do it. Yeah, I got, uh, because I released how many three albums. I've released my own my own albums. You know, as you know. It was just just a trial of how to do things, how to do this, how to do that. So I know how to produce CDs. I have no experience in vinyl, but uh, well, the bad experience is because I couldn't sell any. That's the thing, because I didn't have any fan base. I was just a you know the like a studio rat. I was working you know with, for composing new stuff, and and then I just suddenly decided that oh, I think my music worth you know putting on CD, you know, and selling it in, 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 uh, worldwide. I've sold maybe about, you know, 12 CDs and just uh, the rest of them, I'm just, uh, just oh, <laughs> no. give them away as a gift. But, uh, I mean, now looking back, uh, I just understand how naive I was and uh, I just knew nothing. I just knew that because I, I couldn't, I, it was about 10 years ago or maybe more than that, uh, maybe 10 years ago, because as, as I said before, I didn't have any information of, couldn't get any information of how to actually sell stuff, how to promote the stuff. And okay, I figured out how to produce the stuff. Sure. So that's one thing. To produce is one thing, but the other thing is to sell that thing, <laughs> what yeah. you just produced. Yeah, you can't be the marketing manager as director as yeah. well as a price. You need, yeah, you need someone to help you on that. Mm. Uh, yeah you can't but mate as you say it's all part of the learning process and you know you're a much wiser man now than you were a year ago and oh One thing I was going to ask you is that obviously you're a producer and musician, you write your stuff and record your own stuff. Do you do you mix it and do you um, master it yourself or do you send it away to somebody else to, to do that? I do everything but mastering. I don't do mastering myself. I don't trust myself. <laughs> I probably could have done it, but um, no. Uh, my One of my golden rules is not to do mastering myself. Yeah. Just I'm sending it away. I need some, you know, professional ears and professional studio to do that. Uh, the proper proper engineer. And yeah. uh, so, no, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm, I'll never do that. I'll never do my, my own mastering. I'm always going to send it away. Yeah. Somebody it's else good to it. have that. It's good to have that little bit of detachment from it, I guess, because. Yeah. Yeah, we know what it's like. Sometimes when you're recording songs, you've heard that song three or four hundred times over and over yeah, again. Yeah, so yeah. 
you, you get caught in a little bit of a rut. So if you're mastering it as well, you're not no, listening, you, you, you you're not listening it. to it fresh years. You lose a vision. You lose a very sound vision. You you lose it. You just uh, again, you 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 have got the rough mix, you know, mm. ready for mastering. And you listen to it. Okay, that sounds good. That sounds satisfying. Okay. And that's it. There's nothing yeah. else you can do about it. What what do I have to do? How to improve this? How to improve, and you just can get stuck forever. Mm. The problem is you just you'll just just get stuck forever. Sure. You, you'll make one master, then you'll come back. Oh, I don't like it. I need to do some tweaks. I'll do this, this, and that. I need to change this and that. Then okay, that sounds better, probably. And then you come back and get back two days again, and then you don't like it, and then you just do it completely in a different way yeah. again. So this is why you have to send it away. Yeah. When it comes back to you, that's complete. And there's nothing you can do about it. You can't touch it. That's it. And they call mastering the dark art because no one really knows what it is, but it comes back sounding so much better. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, sometimes maybe some of the songs I, uh, I, I mix just when I, when I listen to them, you know, before sending them away, I listen and I hear, yeah, well, this sounds all right. That's ready for mastering. Yeah, you can go now. Okay. And then when I receive them back, I just uh, I put them on. I turn the screen off, you know, on the computer so nothing distracts, you know, nothing distracts my attention. And I listen to it. I just get blown away you know, of the result. I mean, how could you do that? <laughs> and but I mean it's it's mainly also because of that um, that period when when you send the mastering the, the, the material away you've got that week or two weeks of time when you don't listen to all your stuff yeah I don't I don't do that yeah but as soon as I've sent it away I don't listen to it anymore that's it I only listen to the masters yeah. and then when you receive it back you've got a you know, fresh vision of yeah, yeah, yeah. Your own stuff. And, and nice. Oh, yeah, that sounds good. And you nice. Listen to it and, that's right. and most of the times, it's always good. What will you receive back? Well, I think there was, there was that story there was that story about the Depeche Mode when they was mixing. I can't remember what the song was, but I think they spent three weeks mixing a song, and they were just, like, really, really into it. And then on the third week, someone came in and said, why has he got no snare on it? And they they were so the master and servant. They were yeah. it was master, yeah, master and servant. They were so into it, they didn't even hear anymore that it didn't have a snare on it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. So, so you have to let it go mm. and listen to it with fresh ears for sure. You leave it, leave it for somebody else to do. I mean, yeah. And I'm I'm guessing you're probably knowing your work rate. I mean, I know your new album's only just come out, but I'm guessing there's already a couple of songs for the next one. In the can or being done? Uh, I'm already working on the third album. I thought you might have I'm halfway, I'm halfway, halfway done. Wow. So <clears throat> it's going to come out early January, very early January, probably the first. Right, that quick. Jesus. The first week of January. Amazing. Uh, because, uh, well, this time I was working on two albums at the same time. Yeah. Well, All right, okay. I decided to try so, <laughs> to, do, to do it this way. But it's not going to be a big album. It's going to be uh, like, it's a small album for six songs. Yeah. They can be quite, they're quite long. So one of them is eight and a half minutes and the other one is seven and a half. And uh, it's got a theme, it's a thematic album. So uh, nice. and, there won't be, and there won't be very much guitar on that one. I mean, the first album, the first album was very electronic and kind of soft sounding synths is not the right yeah. word, but yeah. Actors of Your Theatre has got a lot of harder sound with more mm. melody lines and more like jagged synth sounds in it and melodies in it. Mm. Is this new album a progression from that or are you going somewhere uh, else? I don't know. Is there going to be a progression? I don't know. <laughs> it's different from uh, the first and the second album, and uh, it's going to be something different. Cool. The, the theme of the album um, it requires more electronic music. It, it, it's not the guitar. It's a few bits on the guitar, but not as many as on the second album. 
Excellent. So mainly, it's going to be mainly electronic. And, uh, some new, 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 new drums. I'm trying new drums, mm. new, new drum machine, and, and, and new bits and pieces, new approaches. Every time I try to try, try something new. So. It's going to be, I think it's going to be about maybe six songs. Uh, I think I will not throw anything away. Yeah, early January. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Can't yeah, wait. Uh, I've, already, I'm, I've already planned a fourth album, my fourth album, so it's on the list. And uh, <laughs> That's amazing. It's, all, yeah, it's all, all on the paper. The track list is on the paper, so what I'm going to work with and what I'm going to you know, rework. I'm like that. I'm like that rabbit from uh, the Pink Floyd song, you know, breathe, you know, run, rabbit, run, dig that hole, forget the sun. And when at last the work is done, don't sit down, it's time to dig another one. Exactly, exactly. But I mean, in the song, in the song, it's all put in a, in a, in a kind of negative, you know, uh, desperate ways that you have to work to survive this, this and that. But I, I'm, I'm a happy rabbit. I mean, I'm... Um, I'm, I've, I've finished my work and I'm happy to start the next one. I plan the fourth album. Album number four is going to come out in 2022, probably end of summer. Nice. We love your videos as well. Your videos are quite unique. Okay. I mean, they're quite cinematic um, and you come up with some really good ideas. I think the um, the Fighting Monsters one with the, the glasses, I mean, it's, clever. it's a clever <laughs> visual and... Uh, metropolitan child with it's like very cinematic. I mean, you come up with some really good ideas for the videos. This is my the other stuff that I love doing videos, you know, video production mm. as well. Uh, I wish I could spend a bit more time with it if I had better equipment for that and more time. And uh, because I've got I've got the ideas for videos, and uh, I have to choose sometimes because. Uh, I'm a bit limited with the time, and uh, because uh, at the moment my musical career, I mean, I'm not a professional musician. I'm not. I have to do some other some other things, you know, to pay the bills. And, sure, sure. <laughs> and I have to, you know, I I have to manage my time very, very, very. You know, mm. How to say? I have to be very careful with my time. Mm. <laughs> yes, I understand. Totally I have understand. To plan it in the right way, so. And I'd rather make a new song rather than, you know, working with a video. I would love to do it. I'd love to do both. Sure. But uh, I choose, you know, I choose music. Music comes first. So, yeah, but maybe later when I packed up with my other jobs, when music, I hope music will start bringing me some mm. good, yeah, some decent income. And... Uh, then I'll be able to spend more time with the video and do some other yeah. stuff. And, I, and I'm on my own. I've got nothing else. I'm on, nobody else to help me. I've got I'm just on my own. I'm just doing it. <laughs> you're doing a sterling job, my <laughs> friend. Hello, man. You're doing yeah. a brilliant job. <laughs> That's all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. That's fine. I'm, I'll get through that. Oh, that question about table four. Yes. Uh, the phone ahead. I, I, well, I think you were going to hear, you wanted to hear something, you know, that I would mention some famous people kind of, you know, musicians, and there are a few people, I, I wish it was a table for 10, maybe, maybe not table for four. All right, we'll give you a bigger table. This is the or, first exclusive, we, first person. We'll have a barbecue table. better than the kind of invite more people. <laughs> yeah, barbecue party, you've got ten, 10 guests. Oh, 10 guests. The first time we've done this for anyone, mate. <laughs> it's electronic cabaret exclusive, just for phone ahead. <laughs> no, I'm not counting you both. That you come in anyway. So you, oh, you bless you. <laughs> you, you. You not even on a list. You just as you are. You, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're not. So, we're not working, are we? We're not. We're not serving mm -hmm. food. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Who is the best barbecuer? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm all right, but. I bet Mark is. 
Okay, Mark yeah. Hewitt in the barbecue then. <laughs> and he's washing up. No, I'm, washing, I'm good at washing up. Plates. I'm a right old scrubber. I'll do it. All right, okay. <laughs> uh, who would I invite? That would be um, just musicians. So that would be Robert Smith. Nice. Yeah. Peter Gabriel. Yeah. Uh, Martin Gore. I mean, probably all the guys from Depeche Mode, but uh, mainly Martin Gore and definitely Alan Wilder. Yeah. Be there. Yeah. Uh, so. The guys from Tears for Fears, Roland and Mark Kurt. and uh, Kurt. Kurt. So I was going to call him Chris. Sorry, Kurt. If you hear me. <laughs> 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 um, Amazing band. Roland Orzabal and Kurt Smith. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Um, Ali? If we could, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you well, can't yeah, Definitely, yeah. yeah. He would be the first on the list. Uh, David Gilmore. Uh, I think you got two more. Two more? I think so. I like the sound of this party. Yeah, I do as well. Russ Egan, he'll be a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> because we need a proper DJ. Um, Don't come any better. The, the, the professional one, the, the, the perfect DJ. Yeah. And uh, there should be, well, there's only boys there. There should be one lady there as well. So uh, there will be Florence Welsh from Florence mm. and the Yeah, good shout. Good, good shout. shout. Good mix, mate. Really good mix of styles musically as well. Really nice. And, uh, and uh, you you mentioned uh, the collaborations I would like to do with, you know, with what, what musicians I would like to work with. And uh, I would love to work with Robert Smith and a Florence in the Machine. Sure, yeah. So that, That'd be amazing. Uh, if I had a chance. That's amazing. Yeah. Because Robert Smith's just done a song with churches, hasn't he? Yes. On, yeah, Robert. On, yeah, on the latest churches album. Talking yeah. of Tears for Fears, have you heard their their new song? Uh, which one? Tipping. Uh, Tipping point. It's they've got an album coming. They've got a brand new album coming out next year. I think it is. February. I haven't, I haven't yet. No. But they released their first song this week, a couple of days ago, and it sounds. I like it. It sounds very much like it should have been on. Songs from the big chair kind of era. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I liked it. Oh, yeah, I'll, so, I'll, um, I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, check it out. Yeah. It's, on, it's on YouTube. Yes, I, I, I did. I recently I was listening to Tears for Tears recently on, on, on Spotify, but it wasn't there. Yeah, it's literally, I think, a couple of days ago. It's yeah, literally came out a couple of days ago. All right, but yeah, it's worth checking out. Um, mm -hmm. definitely worth checking out. That's a great party, mate. Great part. Right, yeah. And we'll have a drink to David Bowie on that part. Exactly. <laughs> say, and all British artists as well. Yeah. We're, not, not, bad. we're not bad at this music stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Mate, that's something you do good, yeah, the music. Yes, but yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's a huge input I mean, for the entire civilization. The entire <laughs> 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 you come to the UK? Because you was in the UK a couple of days ago, weren't you, last week? No. I've, uh, I've lived in the UK for 12 years. Uh, and I... Uh, yeah, I uh, left about four years ago. Mm. I haven't been there since. I was just trying to uh, line up a beer for us three. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, used man. To, I used to live in Crawley. All oh, right, Sussex. Well, where the queue is from. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I and I actually uh, I've met Robert Smith myself. You have? Yeah, I have. Nice. And 
it was a, it was a funny bit. I I used to work uh, in uh, in one of the hotels in Sussex as an administrator, and uh, they had a birthday party over there. The family, he his mother's birthday party was there. I think it was my his mother's ninetieth ninetieth birthday. Wow. And um, that was him. That was just their family family dinner. About thirty of them, all the relatives and aunties and uncles and nieces, and, and uh, there wasn't any of the Cuba band, other the Cuba band uh, band members. It was just mm. Robert and his family. What a lovely people they were. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's just uh, himself and uh, the rest of the family is just so so positive. I mean, I didn't expect that. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't expect that. There's no, no arrogance at all as, you know, being a superstar. I'm a superstar. I don't want to hear me. He's just... Uh, Down to earth. Mm. A brilliant sense of humor. He did some, he's joking on, the, on his members of his family and all this stuff. <laughs> it was lovely. A lovely party. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and they've got a lovely picture. They have a lovely picture in their in their photo archive, in the family archive, where is me, well, starting with me, holding a cake uh, next to his mother. There's me standing, Robert's standing here, and uh, Robert's missus is standing on there. So it's four oh, of us, excellent. me holding a cake. Oh, cool. And all four of us. Uh, of course, I, I haven't seen that picture. <laughs> it's, it's in their archive somewhere, mm. maybe still, but... Amazing. I would love to see that picture. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really brilliant. What a thing, though, to meet someone like Smithy. And, um, mate, if you do come to London, let us know, because we'd love to buy you dinner or beer or both. I uh, will definitely let you know, but when it's going to happen, I don't know, with all this situation at the moment. I know. Uh, Keep my fingers crossed. And hopefully it's because you've got... We'll see a how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We'll improve, yeah. as I say, yeah. Always, as I always say, we'll improvise. Yeah, definitely. And look, you know, I'm sure your fan base is going to grow. Then that means you're going to have to play live, which will then fund your vinyl releases. And me and Mark will be applauding it all the way. So, mate, I see. Can't thank you enough for your time today. Really can't. Thank you, thank you, guys. I'll do myself. I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do my best not to disappoint you. And- you know, any reason. Mate, you, you've done, you, honestly, your stuff's great. And so we just want more people to hear it. So we'll keep supporting you and, um, yeah, just keep us informed about new stuff. And I will. You know, hopefully you can tour and get an excuse to come to London let me and Mark buy your dinner. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, and we'll I'll, buy, you in touch. I'll buy your dinner, I'll buy your drink. Yeah. Done. It's a done. Keep in touch. <laughs> keep in touch. And we're really looking forward to the new stuff in January. That's incredible. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it's a great thing, great exclusive for our, our viewers. So appreciate it, mate. Really do. Thank right, you. Ed, thanks very thank much you for your guys. time. Uh, I just want to thank everyone who's who was watching, who spent yep. their time with us. Thank you all, and uh, yeah, just follow funnel ahead any way you can. You know, just just let me see, let me see how many you are. You know, so uh, so there, I know what, what how big the fan base is at the moment. Yep. So I'm in control. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get them to subscribe to your um, control, yeah. channel. Yeah, we'll put a subscription button or a link on the on this on this as we edit it. Well, Mark will because he's far better than me at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, thank you so much, mate. Absolute yeah, joy. I'm so I glad. Will promise, I will promise to make more and more good music. Well, I hope. Yeah, we're loving what you do. We're loving no, it. Mate, the music's great. So that that I have no doubt, and just can't wait to hear more of it. But uh, yeah, both of us wish you. All the luck, and um, you know, I, I know you're going to smash it. So um, it's brilliant, and thanks for your time. Thank you, guys. Thank See you, then. you take care. Take, take care. care. See you soon. All the best. Bye-bye. Cheers, mate. Bye, bye.
So that's it for another fantastic episode. I hope you enjoyed the music um, and the person that is phoning ahead. Mark and I certainly love meeting him. He's now a firm friend of the Electronic Cafe. Phone ahead. Thank you, mate. Thanks for your time. It's great to meet you. Um, and for everyone else, look forward to seeing another episode of Electronic Cafe very soon. And don't forget, we're getting ever nearer to that amazing top 30 albums of 2021 with a couple of good things in between. Take care. Bye for now. Stay safe, take care, and thanks for watching the Electronic Cafe. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.